Hi, Carol here and welcome to my craft room this morning. I am just getting over a two-day flu bug Sunday and Monday and Sunday night it hit me with a bad migraine because our weather system is changing our barometric pressure and it's playing havoc with my brains and uh, flu bug is flu bug is setting in so I am trying to overcome that so I thought what better way to try and overcome is come in my craft room and do a card so that's what I'm doing because this is so many layered card and I am watercoloring I decided to uh, work on it early this morning and I'll show you what I came up with. I am using the uh, oh extra thick, um, I put it away, watercolor paper anyway. It's that one I always buy from Michaels. It's really thick and uh, it's a nice cardstock and I cut it out to just fit on this image. So I am going to uh, stamp that out first before I use my magnetic platform here. And then I took out my slice and I cut a friend's uh, word out of it. And I love that slice for this reason. Um, it's quick as well. You can do from one inch, half an inch to four inches or one inch to four inches. So this is two and a half inches and I think it's just perfect in the craft stock. I am going to, I might as well do that right now. Oh, I will in a second. I'll put it there so I don't forget. I am going to use some of this uh, champagne embossing powder by Recollections to firm this up and give it a more antique look. Then I'm going to use the Stampin' Up! dots candy dots and there's one that's exactly that color so I'm going to take that out and use that and what I did this morning is um, I have to get down just see where the camera is I actually used my sewing machine yay with my green thread every card I do has to have green thread so I don't know how to change it to white thread which I don't have yet I have a little spool but I don't think it's going to fill the bobbin so I have to wait till my sister comes over and show me again. So uh, what I did was, is I just drew, drew every sheet of paper in an eighth of an inch. So you can see I have the craft card stock, the eighth of an inch red. I drew from this, I'm getting so much use out of this farmhouse, uh, six, eight, is it six by six or eight by eight? I have some, so many different sizes, I don't even know, but anyway. I drew from this pack, which is absolutely gorgeous for Christmas. You, you just can't get a nicer pack. I have not seen a nicer pack than that for cards. So I drew the um, the song sheet. And always remember when, well, this wasn't hard because I had the, um, the um, whatever that thing is there. I was going to say a hmm, bass violin. I guess, but uh, I don't play that, so <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, I could tell this was right side up because of that image. But if you're using a small piece like this, or even smaller, like I used, oops, something's on there, on the front down here, watch for where your notes are. You know, if you see anything, you know, like uh, printing on here, or just, you know, it looks good that if you have it the right way. And it might look like you know music, <laughs> if you don't. And then I drew on the red again, and then I drew out a uh, card, a plain card stock out of here. Um, and then I went with Old Olive and Barn Door Red. No, I'm sorry, this is Forest Moss from uh, Tim Holtz. I distressed the edges of the mistletoe because this Stampin' Bella image that I'm going to do has holiday wishes and mistletoe kisses is the um, saying down here and she's holding mistletoe and she's a really cute image it's not much coloring so it's not that intense and uh, you could do it with anything and then I get to use my applique yay on her dress better get that out so I don't forget it 
and then I just put a little piece down on the bottom and I haven't decided once I get the image up there um, I am going to put a gift card in here so I just put two-sided tape going around here and it's going to fit a gift card so that's why that is going down like that I will also you can write your sentiment there here wherever you want and so I made two of these and I because the image is so long I didn't know where I'm going to put them I wanted to put this one down here I think I still will I grabbed a sheet of mistletoe that I had gotten at the dollar store had all of mistletoe all over and a whole bunch of other things I have my gold twine that I got at the Salvation Army and this is just gorgeous gorgeous um, thin gold twine it's absolutely beautiful so what I did is I take a 1 16th punch and I just take it to the edge right to the edge there and I cut out little notches so that my thread can sit in there and I'm not fighting with it falling down whatever I know exactly they're gonna hook right into that notch so I did that on this one and I also notched oh, let me get this off this one and Jody I got to use my sticky stuff store dark dimensionals and I'm gonna tell you something uh, if you're watching this the sticky stuff store these are sticky they are not coming off you're not slide they're not sliding they're not going anywhere they are staying there I was amazed when I took these off and visit the sticky stuff store please because there's nothing nicer on dark cardstock than to have dark uh, 1 16th of an inch high hexagon um, dimensionals so I am going to put that here I think that's why it's not down I'm not sure and um, this one I used my sewing machine and went across here anything that's green it's getting sewn with my sewing machine <laughs> oh my I thought my mom would have been so proud to look down from heaven and see me using a sewing machine because I think she thought I was dropped on my head out of all four girls <laughs> I was the only one that didn't touch a sewing machine <laughs> or a pot and pan <laughs> I do now. I obviously, I have a family. I have to feed them. But sewing machine. Oh, no way. I would go around it. I wanted nothing to do with the sewing machine. And now I couldn't wait to get one. So, Mom, look at this. I'm sewing. You're so proud of me, I know. And um, anyway, so I don't know what I'm going to do with these. I'm going to say, I know what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to set them inside my card, which measures four and a half by seven. And I love these large cards because we have the We Are Memory Keepers envelope maker. Or you have the Stampin' Up! Memory Keep uh, board. Um, envelope board. Whatever. As long as it makes an envelope. I don't care what they call it. And um, so this is where I am at right now. Right there. So let's get the image stamped. I was more concerned about the coloring and fitting in my time because of my gabbing. And another thing I learned that I was putting um, one of my sheets on the bottom of the magnetic form and one on the top and then using, um, let's see, I was sandwiching them but I saw it somewhere and I actually really ruined this because I didn't notice it was upside down and I've got some grooves in here and uh, I was watching somebody else do it and they put their flat on the bottom then they put their um, let me see how they did this then they put their paper if I'm right and then they put this like this so that it okay so this is my do not touch but they're all touched man alive you should see how many warped images I had there okay so they did this and then they let the cut go into this board but yet the magnet still magnetizes on here like that and then they put this over top and I think it's I think that's a great idea I was doing it the totally opposite and I was making some boo-boos and I didn't like that because it actually went into my plate so enough said about that let's get this image on 
here and I am using Ranger Archival ink. It's nice and black. It comes in this great big honking case. has nice um, foam on the bottom for getting that nice texture you need when you're uh, stamping your image and I like that too. So we will set Stamping Bella over there. And let's make some room here. Whew. I need room. Okay, so let's open this up. Now, Stampin' Bella does not come with foam on the back. It's just the image, and that's why you're not paying so much for them. That's okay with me, because you know what? I put a little bit of double-sided tape on the back of my block, my Stampin' Up! blocks. I love them. You can grip them, and it's the image comes out beautiful. So I am not going to put anything on the back of mine. I like them just like this. It's just as quick for me to wash off a block than to pay to put this foam stuff on the back. So here we go. Let's see. Oh, I love that on the back of this, that foam. Look at that. Such a clean, clean impression. Okay, enough said. Excuse me. Here I go with that cough again. I don't mind the cough and cold, but migraines I cannot handle. And yesterday was the worst. They get worse as I get older. Some people say their migraines dissipate as they get older, but not mine. Uh, I'm doing this so that I can see the image to put my uh, Sizzix dye. Beauteous. Okay, so we have that. Now I'm going to set this here. I am going to set this. Um, you know, yep, I'm going to set this on top. It magnets down just the same. I want to get her totally in the frame. So, I know you probably can't see me. I'm playing around with this so that I get the everything in there, which I think if I move that over a tad, I think I'm okay. Let's see. Run this through. There we are. Now I'm going to keep this on because I'm going to do a little bit of sponging around it before I take it off. So I'm going to do that with this green because the theme of my card, the colors are in this moss green. If you're using Stampin' Up, I guess it would be your old olive, it would be the same thing. And um, so this is nice because you can hold it. And I thought of spraying it with my Copic air gun, but I thought, you know what, this is going to give it just a nice dark. I wanted it dark because I can play with the inside coming out of her dress later. I hope you can see this. Let me zoom in on what I'm doing here. There we are. There we go. And hopefully I'll keep it right there. You can light hand it along the bottom. It doesn't have to be as heavy. You have total control when you keep the die in, which is nice. You still have the corners of your applicator. I made these applicators from um, 
dowels I got at the thrift store. Then just lightly. There we are. That's all you need. I hold my breath <sighs> every time I do that. <laughs> I don't know why. I just don't want to make a mistake. Okay, I'm setting that aside. Quickly, I'm going to emboss this. Oh man. Um, it has plummeted to freezing cold and that's why I got a migraine. Because my migraines are caused by barometric pressure. I've already been diagnosed years ago, years and years of putting down everything I eat, weather temperature, CAT scans, you name it, I have had it. And they said it is definitely barometric migraines. Okay, so while you got your sticky fingers, run this across. And believe you me, this is gonna look awesome. So is my finger. Where's my um, uh, Kleenex it's around here somewhere? I just had it. There we go. Oh, here's the cloth right here. Okay. Now, let's see, we have this in the frame. And I want to get my tweezers. And I love these honeybee tweezers because I just love them. You can hang on to it. I want to add a lot on here. And I want to hold it up so that when I am, um, let me just show you here. When I am embossing it, I don't want to blow this all over the place. I want to have it really thick on top. And that's what's nice about this is you can just load it up and it'll make sure that your heat gun is really hot and um, it'll blow off into your let's see there we go so this is really thick can you see the thickness there how I poured it on there now I'm going to heat up my Marvy tool not the Stampin' Up one because I find this Marvy tool gets hotter than the Stampin' Up heating tool um, so I'm going to use it and you go with what works. If it's really hot, if I need heat right away, this is what I'm going with. So, here we go. Cover the image. Whoop. I keep picking at it. I'm not going to have any. Um, there we go. Look at that. Already. It is sizzling. And that is finished. I'm going to take that off. Go across it again. There we are. I'm telling you, this Marvy heat tool, in comparison to Stampin' Up, I like Stampin' Up, but uh, I have to say the Marvy tool gets hotter and it has a, a wider. Uh, end on the end of it and I think I'm going to get the Ranger one the Tim Holtz one because that is whisper quiet Wow, you can be doing videos Using that to emboss and you can't even you can hear somebody because it's so quiet Okay, so there my friends it is done <laughs> It's finished. It looks gorgeous So let me get that on this. I see I'm breathing heavy. Oh, all right, put my Versa mark away, and let's move on to the image. Okay, let's take it out, take it off, and look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Now let's see how much time I have to do this. That's what you're left with. Absolutely beautiful. Nine minutes. Yikes. Let's get going. Okay, I don't know... Um, uh, let's see. I use the large dimensionals here, and you know what? I can tell already the difference in dimensions because you can. This is going nowhere. I mean, when you're grabbing hold of these, 
it's coming off. Only the backing. Underneath is not budgy. Sticky store, sticky stuff store. Get your orders in there. Prices, you can't, you can't, you get more for your, you get more bang for your buck, I'm telling you. And black dimensionals. So, I love to endorse something that wants to save you money. Okay, let's get this on. Beauteous. My inside, I probably, my inside is on. Let's close her up and let's start coloring. I'm going to move it out of the way because I just am. All right, let's see what I've got going here on this color compared to this color. And seven minutes. Yikes. So let's compare reds. I want these two reds. Uh, let's compare browns. Hmm. I want these two. Yellow two in the hair. Okay. And that should just about do it. Black. Yes, I need black. Black is black. So I'll grab one of those and let's get at her. Um... That I want to use my Tim Holtz fine tip marker. These are fine, just not fine enough. This Tim Holtz has a really thick end. And like I said, I have to get my paper towels and I hope this doesn't go into number two. Um, I really do. See, I was practicing last night with some images with the uh, Tim Holtz um, markers and I thought you know what I'm going to give these uh, pencils a try and six minutes I am pushing it aren't I always pushing the envelope okay it shouldn't take that long you want to take your image I do not wet it first a lot of people do I don't. I set my base, how thick I want it, where I want it, and I go from there. The light is shining in from the right. Most right-handers, the light generally comes in from the right, and you work from the left. All of your lines, I put a mark in. One down there. Any folds under her armpit will be dark. Okay, and then these little red things. I don't know what's green, what's red, but I'm going with that. There we are. And I will give it a light shade even though I am going to drag this in for the middle and I leave it white. I go like this, I set a base of two different colors. This does not matter because I'm using my applique. Okay, so set your base like that. Hair is in the brown and I might as well at the same time At the same time, um, wet everything. Don't I don't do one section. I just color. Well, I do do one section, but let me just see here. Okay, so black is going to be her belt. Cree says I am going to pretty well do a lot of it black because I want it to show up and her skin is going to be E00 with my Copic marker you know I always have two of everything didn't like that one phone is ringing 
Very good sign. She has really skinny appendages. There we go. Okay. I want to do this card in one take, so I am going to watch my time. Let's get some water on here, and then I'm going to use the applique, and if I don't, now I drag the top because this is what I want to be darkest. Okay, then I squeeze out some water. Come on, squeeze out. That's it. And I'm going to just do this part because, and then I'll show you, I don't want you to suffer going through the whole thing, but I will take a pic and put it on my blog. Squeeze too much out. Okay, let's get the applique on there. When I'm finished with this, I also add burgundy to this red and black. And I will show you as soon as we get done. Let's get this applique on because I am sorry that I took so long, but I want you to see this. I do not stamp my hand down on on that either because it pushes it out you don't want to push your color out okay and here we go quick 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 if you go to www.stampinribbons.blogspot.com you will see the finished card one minute yikes come on marvy let's get hot here I'm going to put that here. I'm going to show you how it's going to look on there. Let's get her on there. One minute. Oh, I didn't do her shoes. There we go. Okay. Puff up. I love it. Look it. You cannot get a sweeter image, I am telling you. Okay, there you go. Thank you for joining me today. I bet you're glad it's not gone into two parts as well. Here's the outside. Let me pull it down. Look at how it just brings that up. I'm not finished coloring. I will show you the finished product. Thank you so much for joining me. Let's take that off, give you a little peek at the inside. And there you have it, my friends. A beautiful Christmas card. Really doesn't take that much time. Just a whole lot of love goes in there. Here's where my friends is going down at the bottom, like that. Let's swing out and you can see it like that. Take care, my friends. Have a blessed day.